I, I got no problem playing any spur, really. Um, but I think the whole point of this slate is to try to find enough money to stick Nikola Jokic in its center. Hopefully beside DeJounte Murray, if you can muster it. And maybe the Spurs can help get you there. But, I mean, I think the only thing that was surprising about the Denver-Detroit game on Sunday was that Jokic didn't finish with a triple-double. He still got to 62 DraftKings points, <laughs> but... This is someone who across his last four games is averaging over 1.8 DraftKings points per minute. And the beautiful thing from a DFS perspective about Denver is they're so bad when Jokic isn't on the court that you never really have to worry about blow potential. I mean, we talked last week about Golden State going up against Detroit and it was, oh, I don't know if the starters are going to play enough minutes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Denver does not blow teams out because they are arguably the worst roster in the NBA when Jokic is not available. So I think we see another relatively close game like we saw on Sunday. And I think the only difference this time for Jokic is he probably does end up with a triple double. So I'm going to find a way to get Jokic into lineups. You guys were just looking at those numbers. The fact this guy is averaging 60 fantasy points per, and of course is projected for something similar here tonight. So Nick, I mean, it's, it's not just Joker, obviously. I mean, you got Joel Embiid, you got Carl Anthony Towns, you got uh, uh, Yusuf Nurkic is available. You mentioned Pascal Siakam before. Who do you like? Yeah, I mean, Jokic versus Embiid is becoming a real debate night to night with how well Embiid is playing. But I still mm -hmm. trust Jokic, you know, even even though you're paying up. Um, you know, both those guys have decent matchups tonight. But Jokic going up against Detroit, 27th in defense over the last 10 games are the Detroit Pistons. Isaiah Stewart, a big who's who's pretty prone uh, to getting into foul trouble. Uh, but like Arian said, I mean, that's a that's a great point that when Jokic is off the court, they're so bad. You know, when's the last time like you've really worried about Nikola Jokic not getting to 32, 33 minutes? It just doesn't happen, uh, and, and it's kind of rare for a guy uh, who has that kind of statistical upside to to never really be in danger of a blowout. So it's a really good point. I, I will say I would not chance it tonight on Anthony Davis, who is expected to make his return. Uh, he's listed at ninety eight hundred dollars. I, I don't know who is putting Anthony Davis into a lineup tonight and feeling really good about that uh, at that price. You know, if you want to save a little bit of money or, or maybe even you know throw this guy in a utility spot and play Jokic or play Embiid. I'm going to go once again back to that Houston San Antonio game and go Jakob Pertl at 6,400. Again, Houston is the worst defense in the league. That's the case over the last 10 games as well. They really have no trustworthy big men outside of Christian Wood. I mean, Daniel Tice is essentially out of the rotation. Shangun only plays 12 to 14 minutes. Um, and Christian Wood, obviously not a great defender. I mean, his, his impact comes on the offensive end. And Pertl has 40, or excuse me, 51, 39, 38, and 50. DraftKings points over his last four games. He's played almost 70 minutes in the last two games combined. That's not always the case for him. So uh, I think a lot to like about Jakob Pertl against that Houston Rockets front line.